On this episode of Ask Jason, I've got a very interesting question from Stephanie about enlightenment. And this is a question that often pops up in the comments section and I get a lot of emails about this. Even though I have other videos that address this and I've spoken about this at length on the podcast, I thought I'd speak about it more at length today. And Stephanie asks me, who attains enlightenment? Is it me or something else? I like how Stephanie said something else which I'll address later. But this is a great question and it's something that a lot of people don't consider. And I often see this when people study Eastern spirituality. They often speak about themselves in glowing terms like, oh, I became enlightened at this such and such date or I've experienced this and that. And instantly when I see the word I or I am this or I have done this, then that's an immediate red flag because there is no I who can claim the experience of enlightenment because the I is a dualistic aspect built on socialization and conditioning. Hence, it's built on separation. And the one who is enlightened has dissolved all duality and understands and abides in the non-dual reality. And this is what's part and parcel with the enlightenment state of consciousness. So, you are right in asking this question, Stephanie, but nobody can be enlightened. Now, understand what I'm saying here. Nobody can be enlightened. No I can be enlightened. That individual can have that enlightenment state, but it means that the individuality and the identity and the ego has dissolved and moved out of the way so that the ultimate undifferentiated state of consciousness, Tao or Brahman, is moving through that localization of that one consciousness. I was going to say that person, but localization of that one consciousness. This is what a spiritual master is, right? Or a guru or a Bhagavan. They are a localization of that one consciousness. They are not an ordinary person anymore by any stretch of the imagination. And so none of us can be enlightened, but we can abide in that ultimate state, but no one will be there to claim or verify it. Others may say that person is enlightened, but that person will never say once in their life that they are enlightened because there's no person there anymore to claim the experience. This is what I find very funny in a lot of the comments I get on a lot of my videos where some people will say, like a minority will say, oh, i became enlightened at such and such date and I am this and I am that and that's the red flag. They're not, they never experience it because they can never claim it. All of the great masters throughout time never claimed the experience. It was others who projected that sort of term or that sort of understanding of what they're experiencing onto them as opposed to the teacher themselves saying, I'm enlightened already. I had this experience and, this, and that experience. That's not how it works because once you are in the state of enlightenment, then there's no person to claim the experience because you are abiding as Brahman itself without a sense of individuality. And so whenever you hear someone say, I am enlightened or I am this and that, this implies that they're very egocentric or that they've got something to sell you or they're trying to angle it a little different way and a lot of these claims come from a little bit of insecurity on the individual's part because they sometimes may think that they might not have the knowledge that you have let's say and so they want to just say that look i'm enlightened already <laughs> what does it matter what you say and you know you see a lot of people shaming people a lot like saying oh it's too intellectual for me i'm already enlightened and it's like well if you were already enlightened you wouldn't shame others for their acute intellect or for their heightened intelligence. Maybe you just feel a little bit inadequate to that person's intellect or intelligence. We've got to remember that a lot of people who have purified their mind and eventually became enlightened become teachers who have a very sharp wit and intellect and a heightened intelligence. It's very common. It's very common. There are those who remain silent, but even when we look at Ramana Maharishi, for example, he remained silent a lot of the time, but then when he would speak, he had a very heightened sense of intelligence and he was very intellectual, spoke very eloquently. That's not a problem. The problem is, is if you can't be around someone basking in their own intelligence and intellect 
without feeling insecure and then saying, oh, well, I'm already enlightened. I don't need to hear this. I don't need to hear this knowledge. I, I heard this a lot on my Astravaka Gita series where a lot of people almost get offended by the Vedantic knowledge. And look, I'm not putting anything on myself on those videos. That is the knowledge as it is, according to the Astravaka Gita, through the teachers I've learned from in Vedanta. And that's how the knowledge is presented in the Vedic schools. And so you don't have to agree with that knowledge, but that's how it is. There shouldn't be a reaction of, oh, I'm already enlightened, I don't need to hear this knowledge. It's okay, if you're already enlightened, you don't need to state that you don't need to hear the knowledge. Again, that implies a separation and a duality. That implies that they still are an ego. That's what my point is here. And so you don't want to fall into that trap of thinking that you are enlightened. Because if you are thinking that you're enlightened, it's the ego that's thinking it's enlightened. But it's not enlightened. The ego can never be enlightened because it's built on separation. Enlightenment is the dissolution of separation and the abidance and the oneness of reality, the one undifferentiated consciousness that we all are. And then you will be in the state of enlightenment, but there'll be no one there to claim it outside of those who perceive you as one who is in that state of enlightenment. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.